Renovating a vintage twin tangy type model steam engine. This is about the painting. It's time to start painting using Precision Paints LMS Crimson Lake Paint. This is a really good colour for models, the same colour that LMS locomotives were painted in. Before starting the painting process, always stir the contents of the paint tin very thoroughly, and then apply the paint. Painting model steam engines seems to be a bit of an art in itself, and I'm no real expert in this field. I should really use etch primer, but in reality I seldom do. The best paint I've ever used on an engine was some two-pack, but this is nasty stuff and it doesn't seem to brush very well, and if you spray it you need breathing apparatus and it's wholly impractical. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm using Precision Paints LMS Red to paint this engine, mainly because that's the colour the engine was in the first place, and also I had a pot of it. Humbrol paint is quite good also, that seems to give a good finish too. A quick word about using self-etching primer. The idea of self-etching primer is that it contains an acid and that eats into the metal and makes the paint stick to the metal. So that's the principle, but I do find that when painting a brass or gunmetal engine, if the paint gets knocked, it still chips off, with or without the etching primer. So generally I paint steam engines the way I'm doing it here, and the paint is direct from the tin, so at a future time, if the paint gets damaged, it's very easy to retouch because you don't have a big thick coat of etching primer underneath, so you can do almost invisible retouching repairs on the paint. Whether you use an etch primer or not, it's very important to key the metal before painting. This is done with some medium sandpaper and puts a series of fine scratches on the metal that the paint can stick to. The most important stage in the painting process is the preparation and here's me rectifying a mistake. I missed a little piece of debris, and I'm removing it with a screwdriver point before continuing. As I mentioned earlier, this video is running at 20 times normal speed, that's 2000%. It allows me to show the entire painting process without taking up too much time. This is a very fiddly job, much more fiddlier than you think, and it's quite difficult to stop the paint from running onto some of the surfaces that you don't want painting like the bit of paint here that's currently running onto the crosshead guide. This is very easy to remove with a cloth though. If you find yourself doing a job like this, and if you also find yourself getting bored with it, the best thing to do is stop. If you continue and paint when you're bored, you're going to make a real mess of it. So just go away and do something else for a while and come back to it. On this engine I decided to paint around the nuts that secure the actual cylinder to the main bed plate which gives a cleaner edge to paint up to. Time for a temporary break from painting. This is the other cylinder on the other casting, and there's a problem with it. Two of the studs were broken, and worse still, they were just rotating in the holes, so I had to chisel them off. Looking closely at the state of the holes on the cylinder cover tells me that someone's had problems with this before. I have to put this right, and the easiest way to put it right is to unscrew all the cladding. I initially thought that this cladding was held in with small rivets, but they're very tiny screws, and they're not going to come out. I think the first thing to do is to clean up the cylinder covers. So what I'm doing here in the lathe is refacing the front of the cylinder cover. I'll be doing this to both cylinder covers to make them identical. Once I've machined the first cylinder cover, I use a micrometer to see how thick it is. Then I will machine the second cylinder cover to the same size. And here they both are, freshly machined and cleaned up. And as you can see, the cylinder cover on the left is a bit of a mess. The holes have been filed out and drilled bigger and messed about with. This is not my doing. Anyway, so now I know that it's not a feasible proposition to remove the cylinder cladding, I may as well paint the rest of the casting. Whilst I'm painting though, I'm thinking about what's the best way to repair this. And the best way to do a repair on this engine is to just use a couple of dummy studs. Luckily, there are plenty of other studs to hold the cylinder cover in place. Here are the freshly painted cylinder covers, with some nice crimson lake paint in the centre. So now all I have to do is go back to the painting and give the other parts another coat. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.